Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Tuesday evening to you all. I hope you guys are doing great out there tonight and had yourselves a wonderful day. And I hope everyone has had a great week out there so far. I know it's been hectic trying to figure out Hurricane Milton, which you see on your screen as a Category 5 storm once again with us this evening. When we made the video this morning, it weakened to a Category 4 storm, but it's hit a secondary peak, if you will, and it's re-intensified. Um, here in the southern Gulf of Mexico as it continues to chug towards Florida and pull away from the Yucatan Peninsula now. So we're going to talk about what's going on with the system right now. We're going to go over the latest from the National Hurricane Center. We're going to give you guys some, some recon data. The hurricane hunters are flying in and out of the system just about nonstop now. So we're going to try to catch some new information for you folks. Uh, and try to get you guys just up to date info. Um, I like to do that in these videos. It tears my nerves up when I do a video and then 10 minutes later after I publish it, we get new information, but it just happens when you have a changing situation like this. We'll go over all the model information. We'll go over the hurricane models, the global models. Uh, we'll talk about on some ensemble guidance and how the track has shifted a little far south. We'll talk about what that means. We'll go over impacts. I uh, will talk about winds, uh, you know, rain, um, the storm surge, all of that. And uh, then we'll just kind of scroll through social media just a little bit for you at the very end of the video and just try to get some of that new and update information for you folks. So there's a lot to cover. So timestamps are up throughout the entire video. Just jump ahead to certain portions of the video you want to pay attention to. Don't blame me one bit if you don't have the time to watch a guy, you know, jabbers jaw off about the weather um so take advantage of them they're there to help you folks and just you know fish through the the video as you will so if you guys have not subscribed certainly consider doing that like the video if you like it and if anybody has anything that i can pray about or pray over please put it in the comments below that's a very important portion of this channel if it's unspoken put that if it has nothing to do with the hurricane put that we got you covered we'll pray for you we got a wonderful community with this youtube channel family type atmosphere and uh, we're all here for you and here to look out for you. And more importantly, God is. So let's get rocking and rolling. So here we are. Hurricane Milton, a powerful hurricane. And in my opinion, it's just as healthy now as it was yesterday evening. Now, as far as wind speed wise, of course, it's not a 185 mile per hour hurricane. It's actually a 165 mile per hour hurricane at the time of me making this video. But as far as looking at this on satellite, I mean, the eye has cleared out once again after... Um, certainly not looking as clear this morning and throughout the morning hours all the way into early this afternoon. And then about midway afternoon, the eye began to clear out again, which told us that this thing was starting to rapidly intensify once again. And it is what it is right now. You see the areas in kind of blackish white color surrounding the central um, portion of the system, the eye of the hurricane. This tells us we have intense cold cloud tops surrounding the entire um, eye of the system, which means this has a, uh, a just very healthy convection surrounding completely around the eye of the eye of the hurricane. So it tells us that this is fully protected. The heart and soul of the hurricane, if you will, which is the central low pressure, the eye of the system is fully protected from any kind of dry air or anything like that. So this is a full fledged category five monster hurricane and it's gotten larger too. It's not as tiny as it was. The wind field is expanding now because this has underwent an eye wall replacement cycle, which means that inner eye wall collapses and then the outer eye wall becomes the new inner eye wall and this happens with very very strong hurricanes and it temporarily weakens them sometimes it permanently weakens them and they never fully recover this one is a prime of prime example of how it can recover and it has so yucatan peninsula here cuba florida is you can actually see the the, the very tip of it right here in tampa bay here of Florida coming up on your screen. So this is this thing is basically heading northeast at this point, heading right towards the state of Florida. Latest from the National Hurricane Center. It's a 165 mile per hour Category 5 hurricane. Forecast to maintain that as we get into the wee hours of the morning, uh, Wednesday morning. And then from 2 a.m. Uh, Wednesday to 2, you might as well say 2 a.m. tomorrow to 2 p.m. tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, Wednesday. It's forecast to weaken into a Category 4 hurricane, but still forecast to be a 150 mile per hour high end Category 4 storm. And then from 2 p.m. Wednesday to 2 a.m. Thursday, okay, this is when it's forecast to do its most weakening, if you will. It could weaken significantly at a pretty significant pace. We just got to watch. So if you notice here, this is the National Hurricane Center cone. 
don't think of this as an impact cone. So don't think of this as, if, say, if you live down here in Miami, you're not going to get any impacts because you're not in a cone. If you live up in Jacksonville, you're not going to get any impacts because you're not in a cone. That, that, that's not what this is. This is where the eye of the system can go. The center of low pressure can go over. It can still go up here, they're thinking, and it can still go down here. But the highest confidence of where it's going is going to be right in the middle of the cone, right? So we're going to really zoom into this. If you remember in this morning's video, the center of the cone was going right over Tampa. Now it's shifted south, and it has it going right over Sarasota. And you think, well, Mitch, that, that's, that doesn't make a huge difference. It makes a massive difference as far as uh, storm surge, uh, the most intense portion of the storm wind-wise with the eye wall wrapping around the actual center of low pressure, and then the onshore and offshore flow, which, of course, connects to the storm surge. Where does the onshore flow come into, which will be at the bottom of the actual eye of the hurricane because these things you know, flow cyclonically like this? So say... If the eye of the hurricane hit Sarasota, then the onshore flow would be just crashing into the most intense timing, I would say, of the onshore flow would be crashing just south of Sarasota. But that's not a forecast. This is still tweaking some. Okay, regardless, as this hurricane is approaching, okay, storm surge will be battering the entire west coast of Florida. Okay, this will still remain a hurricane as it moves over the peninsula of Florida. So, I mean, by the time it gets to like Palm Bay, you know, near Melbourne, it's still a category one or two hurricane. Okay. And it could still, the center of the storm could still go all the way down here. I mean, up here to Daytona Beach, maybe as far south as West Palm Beach. Okay. You've got tropical storm warnings up now for the Bahamas. Okay. So a full fledged hurricane is going to ride right over the peninsula of Florida. Okay. So that's the latest on the colon. I'll back this up a little bit. But, you know, once it gets out here, it doesn't matter too much anymore. Right. So, the latest from the National Hurricane Center, see if we have a new fresh update. At the 5 p.m. update, it was a 918 millibar hurricane, but it's since lowered. Okay, I think we've gotten as low as a 902 now. Okay, but this is the latest update moving east northeast at about nine miles per hour. Okay, so I do want to show you guys that, but like I said, stay tuned for the end. We're going to get you some new information because this thing is changing right now. When we get to the very end of the video, we're going to get some fresh information, fresh recon data, because the hurricane hunters are going in and out of this thing. But before I started this video, they had got a central low pressure of a 902 millibars. It might be even be lower with some more passes going through. So let's go over some of these hurricane models, right? Uh, so, you know, this is initializing too high with the pressure. Okay, 919. Right now it's a 902. Last time I checked. But we'll keep this rolling. It's forecast to kind of maintain strength overnight. Then we get into tomorrow morning. Is this is when, is this when we start to lose the true structure of this hurricane? This, starting, this thing starts to finally weaken some. Well, the h wharf model says absolutely. This thing is going to start to lose some steam. But listen, I've said this multiple times. The cake is baked. We're already getting tons of storm surge getting pushed up against the west coast of Florida already by Wednesday afternoon. The hurricane's still way over here. Here's Tampa Bay showing up on your screen. Tons of storm surge already getting pushed into the area. It's not bad yet. The worst comes when the actual eye comes in and whoever gets hit by that onshore flow. But it's already you're already starting to get rising water along the west coast of Florida. You keep this going, look how this storm really expands. It explodes in size. The wind field broadens. Yes, the wind speeds might begin to drop and the millibar begins to rise, which indicates a weakening storm system, but the wind field expands way out away from the center of the uh, low pressure. Okay, and we got to watch all these. You see, you see these bands right here. These will be having an opportunity to produce tornadoes late tomorrow night. I mean, tomorrow evening into tomorrow night, all the way into Thursday morning. And the latest H wharf model, which the, there's new hurricane models running now, the latest H wharf model has this making landfall still at kind of uh, north of Tampa. And I'm gonna get my phone real quick because I forgot to do this on the fly. I know this, you know, is a little messy here, but I meant to do this and already have this ready. But, you know, I, I do want to mention some town names, communities around the Tampa area, north and south, and, and obviously areas inland too. If the H Wharf model is right, this would make landfall around the Palm Harbor area. And this would bring onshore flow right into the Tampa Bay area. Of course, and, 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 and you know, the models have been consistent on the northern eye wall of the system being the most intense. But this would be offshore flow. It's rotating like this, circulating like this, right? So this would be slamming Spring Hill with that nasty northern eye wall. And, of course, this would move inland and uh, bring that eye wall right into Ocala. 
uh, even into Gainesville, and it would even bring some nasty impacts up the Jacksonville northeast coastline of uh, Florida. And then this will have an opportunity to bring some storm surge even into the coastal regions of Georgia and South Carolina. Okay, now we do have new hurricane models running now. Well, actually, they hadn't even started yet. So we're just going to roll with the 12Z is what we got. The HMOM model, we start to get into tomorrow afternoon, still a powerful Category 4 hurricane. And here it comes. You see how the northern side of the system is, is, is weighted heavily, meaning it's like it's where the worst of the conditions are. It's because dry air is starting to get wrapped into the system, according to all model guidance. Okay, we've been talking about that for almost four or five days now, and I'm actually going to have a segment at the end of the video where we talk about it a little bit more, uh, kind of the nerding out portion, if you will. But we're getting into this evening. Okay, you notice how, I'm sorry, tomorrow evening, <laughs> not this evening, tomorrow evening. Uh, you notice how the southern section of the storm be, starts to lose, like, the yellows and the orange and the reds. It's not as intense anymore. It's because dry air is getting wrapped in. It's eating up the convection right here. And uh, this thing's kind of getting almost split in half, if you will. Not literally, but kind of, right? Um, but this makes landfall a little bit south of the h wharf model. This would kind of bring it into uh, kind of the same area. But once again, it would move, it's saying it's going to go north of Tampa, bring that onshore flow right into the Tampa Bay. All those river inlets and things like that. And this would bring a nasty eye wall up that, uh, what is that, Highway 19 corridor. So this would, I mean, even bring nasty impacts of like, um, like Cedar Key. And then, you know, Ocala, even Gainesville, other communities in north central Georgia would get hit hard too. Now the, H the HFA model, HFB are a little bit different. They follow more in line of the National Hurricane Center. Um, we get into tomorrow early afternoon. You notice the millibar begins to rise, indicating a weakening hurricane. All signs indicate that this should weaken tomorrow. Will it? If it doesn't, we're in huge trouble, guys. And I want to say this, the further south, and I'll mention it again, the further south this hurricane goes, the stronger it's going to be. Yes, it would spare Tampa, but it's going to hit somebody south harder. Okay, the further north it goes, the more dry air shear really rips this apart. Okay, so we keep this going. We're getting into Wednesday afternoon. This thing is the structure of the system is really starting to kind of fall apart, if you will. But d don't don't hear me when I say fall apart and think, Mitch, you're really downplaying this. I'm not downplaying it. I'm just telling you kind of what's going on with this and how it's coming together, how it could fall apart, and how it most likely will lose some steam as it gets close to the west coast of Florida. Because I don't want you guys to think, we're, we're, we're pretty certain a Category 5 hurricane is not going to make landfall on the west coast of Florida. Could a Category 4? Absolutely. Is Category 3 forecasted? Yes, that is what is forecasted. But the HFA model brings the core of this system right into Tampa Bay. I mean, it makes landfall right in St. Petersburg, the Clearwater area. And this would devastate. Um, th this, would, this would hit tampa bay very very hard with catastrophic storm surge okay and, and you know you look at this and you're like man this this doesn't look very impressive it looks ripped apart and i would say yeah that's that's what it looks like and it's going to be interesting to see if this is really how the structure of the storm is because all hurricane models have this the structure of this storm really falling apart but it will still be producing 100 mile per hour plus winds close to the core of the hurricane and this will continue to move across Florida, bring in widespread impacts. The HFB model has done very well, which is what we're looking at now. Still initializing uh, too, too weak with the system. But it says that, hey, you know, we could intensify this hurricane further overnight. And then as we wake up tomorrow morning, we start to weaken it. See, it goes 935, 944, 948, 955. We've had so much rapid intensification with this system. I'm telling you, the hurricane models are saying we're going to have rapid weakening with the system. But like I said, the damage is already done. We already have a ton of water being pushed up against the west coast of Florida. And I still think we're going to get 100 to 110 mile per hour wind gust at least wherever the eye wall hits. And, you know, the HFB model takes this exactly where the HFA model takes, right into clear water. Uh, St. Petersburg, and then right across Tampa Bay, right into Tampa. This would bring a nasty eye wall um, right across the peninsula of Florida, but it's definitely the further south. It would basically bring the center of the system right down uh, Interstate 4, right through Lakeland, and would bring much more impacts to Orlando as we get into the wee hours of the morning 
um, Thursday morning. Landfall is different, folks, but in general, we're thinking sometime in the middle of the night, tomorrow night. Okay, so that's the hurricane uh, model guidance, the latest GFS. We do have the latest run from this, 18Z. The, the global models have been just stuck on this going right over Tampa Bay and surrounding areas. I mean, I know it's kind of hard to see on your screen, but it literally has that L right over. The eye of the hurricane goes right over Tampa. And then proceeds to kind of, I would say inland, it definitely jogs further south. This would bring big time impacts to Orlando, down Interstate 4, all the way to, you know, Melbourne, Daytona Beach, tropical storm to hurricane force conditions. Euro, same thing. It wants to take this uh, very close to Tampa. But the Euro, folks, jogs this further south. The Euro actually follows the European, I'm, I'm sorry, follows the National Hurricane Center forecast. It takes the center of this low right over Sarasota, close to Venice, Bradenton, and just draw, jogs this flat out further south. So, of course, if the northern side of the system is the strongest side, then this would bring much heavier impacts to, say, Lakeland, Orlando. I know there's a lot of other smaller communities and towns mashed into that higher populated area of central Florida. But um, hopefully you're, you're familiar with geographically kind of understanding where you're at close to Orlando and, and, and of course, Lakeland and, and all these other Winter Haven. You know, Disney World, you know, is going to get hit very hard, heavily impacted most likely. And then, of course, this is going to impact the east coast of Florida, too. It's just going to be pushing inland out to sea. Daytona Beach, Melbourne, uh, Palm Coast, St. Augustine, all the way down uh, Interstate 95. Uh, yeah, heavy, heavy impacts, guys. Um, tropical storm to hurricane force conditions. I mean, you're still going to get those 70 to 80 mile per hour wind gusts. So that's all the that's all the model guides. OK, now I do want to show you um, the hurricane model and global model ensemble guide. So this kind of compares all the tracks. You see, this has hurricane models, even the UK met. Um, it has the GFS, the GEFS, so the GFS ensembles, the EPS. It has everything. So this is from 12Z, right? Has the center of the storm. It's kind of hard to see on your screen, but it has it basically going, it has them really clustered up right over Tampa. So it looks like, hey, we're starting to get some solid agreement. And then we turn around, we get 18Z, and it does this. None of them really going over. So we're about to get, it looks like we're about to get a shift south on all hurricane model guidance based off what I'm seeing here. So all this stuff right here that I just showed you with the hurricane model guidance is likely about the shift south. That is what this is telling us right here. So it's going to be wild to see what happens, how far south they shift. But this is kind of this kind of always updates before we actually have the runs of the hurricane models. So it looks like we're about to get a shift south from all model guidance. Okay, so. Pretty wild to see, folks. Um, th this is this is what you hate to see because it's tough to it's tough to forecast it. Um, you know, this would bring more impacts to the places that got absolutely crushed by Hurricane Ian. Uh, this would bring impacts in, from Bradenton to Port Charlotte, Fort Myers. This would this would bring basically from Tampa to Fort Myers. That would put you guys under the gun now, Tampa you know, would get impacts, especially from that northern eye wall, but you would get more so offshore flow, at least when the core of the system moves through. So if we've had a shift south. It's pretty decent shift south too. But um, it's a great post from a, a guy that's very knowledgeable. The center of the storm, and this was from about an hour and a half ago, so it's a little old, but the storm center often wobbles slightly left or right of the forecast track. These short Lasting wobbles are typical of hurricanes. So the model guidance could be responding to that. And this is working its way south of model guidance. Um, so just remember this, you know, Milton is currently deviating a bit south of forecast track. His guys, and I think he's pronounced Tomerberg, a very great guy. Um, I've learned a lot from his post. While, is it po while it is possible landfall ends up south of Tampa, short-lived wobbles are normal and Milton is still close to the ensemble mean forecast in blue. So we're watching stuff like this. Does it wobble back north? It's a big question. But I'm telling you, the more that this hangs, the more that this hangs south, the stronger this hurricane is going to be at landfall. And that's the last thing we need. 
but like I said, I, I made a post on uh, social media today, and I and I basically said that um, it's a lose lose situation. And what I mean by that is, if it makes landfall just just north of Tampa, it's going to bring catastrophic storm surge. If it makes landfall south of Tampa, Tampa will be spared. But you're likely going to, they won't be completely spared. I mean, they're still going to get significant impacts. But you're likely going to get a stronger hurricane that devastates areas south of Tampa. Okay, so it, it, we just got to figure that one out. And, and we only got another 24, out, 24, to 30 out, 24 to 30 more hours to really figure that out. Okay, so this is rainfall. Not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. But, I mean, this is the latest information. Let's see if we got another update. We don't, you know, call them for... Uh, another 12, maybe maybe another foot of rain right over Tampa Bay, right? I mean, any, from Tampa Bay to like Orlando, everybody included, you know, anywhere from 6 to as much as 10 to 12 inches of rain is possible. But you notice hardly no rain down here in the southern tip of Florida. It's because this thing is going to be northernly heavily weighted. Um, I really think a lot of dry air will undercut the system and really uh, deplete a lot of convection, shower, and storm activity on the southern side of the system. Okay, and th there is a ri high risk of flash flooding, though, from Tampa to Orlando, everybody in between, all the way up to Ocala. Um, high risk, this means that between now and the next three days, there is a 70% chance of flash flood guidance being exceeded within 25 miles in a given location. Okay, now, let's see if we got another update here. Let's talk about winds. A lot of people want to know about this. Man, I hate when it glitches like this. It looks so weird. But I can tell you, there's already been a shift. So this is the wind forecast from the National weather service okay this isn't a mo some kind of model this is the experts humans at the national weather service so i want to show you what the run looked like uh the last run looked like so you notice it goes and let's just go on and get closer to this you notice how it brings and guys just because you only see 115 here it's more i mean you look in this little shade right here that's that's pushing guys over 130 mile per hour winds gust wind gust i want to add not consistent wind speeds wind gust it brings it right in the Tampa Bay on this particular run. And look, that's what, this is Interstate 4 right here. Okay, this would bring just 90 to 100, 105 mile per hour wind gusts all the way potentially to Orlando. Orlando right here. But look at the latest run. Look how it just shifts south. That's a pretty big shift south, guys. And it brings the worst of the winds now into Sarasota. So they're buying this 18Z evening shift south and model guidance and now they have that 120 you see that's right over sarasota okay now they have the worst of the winds south of tampa and look it's increasing for um for charlotte harbor now okay and port charlotte and and, and all the communities down here inglewood northport these same areas just got hit very hard by in the winds are forecast is starting to increase for you guys Okay, so it's a lose-lose. It is. I mean, we're starting to, I mean, these colors right here are, are depicting 80 to 90 to 100 mile per hour wind gusts. And I mean, folks, I mean, look here. We, we'll zoom back out of Florida here. And let's just slow it down a little bit here. Look at these winds they're forecasting for the east coast of Florida. I mean, around Melbourne, going for hurricane force wind gusts, uh, Cocoa Beach. I mean, all these areas, Merritt Island. I mean, Palm Bay, just north. I mean, they're going for hurricane force wind gust. It's not good. Not good news at all. Okay, now we'll go over some of the model to the GFS model, like the global model guidance, and it has shifted south. It, it has the worst of the winds now south um, of Tampa, right into the Sarasota area and surrounding communities, Bradenton and everybody in between, down to Venice. Okay. It still shows very strong winds in the Tampa, even north, but there is an obvious shift south. And then you look at the Euro. Let's see if we have the 18-0. No, we don't. That stinks. I was hoping we did. Let's see. Nope, hasn't ran yet. This is the latest European from this afternoon. There is a shift south. Still very strong winds into the Tampa area, but it brings stronger winds into um, the areas just south, like in the Sarasota, 80, 90 mile per hour wind gusts. This is probably underdone a little bit. It's hard for me to even look at the hurricane models because we don't have 18Z, but it's obvious they're about to come in further south. In fact, we only have it 15 hours out, of course. 
Uh, that stinks. So I really want to catch this uh, latest information for you. But it's pretty obvious when you look at this, we're going to get a shift south from all hurricane models. Okay. Now, let's see if we're going to keep toggling through this. Now, if we compare this frame, which is two, which is 5 a.m. tomorrow morning, that's Tampa Bay, and you compare this frame. Okay, not, not a whole lot different there. But I think that this would likely go on and probably make landfall south based off the 18Z model guidance that we got. So, unfortunately, we don't really have it to look at here. If I would have started this video about 30 to 45 minutes later than we would have. But, um, you know, just got to get these videos out or I'll end up being up till 10 o'clock, which is well past my bedtime. But, um, anyways, we do have the 18Z on this, though. The HFB model. So, that's good. We're about to get some information for you. And uh, then it stops right before. <laughs> so, we're 24 hours out. Here it comes. Maybe we'll try to kind of jump back to this here in a second. But yeah, it looks like this is about to come in further south. And this is predicted wind gusts off the HFB model. And as far as pressure, it has a 939 millibar low. If we look at the 12Z from this, oof, it's stronger too. So that's what I'm talking about here. Look at this. This is a 945 millibar low on the 12Z right here. But you get this little shift south. And it's not much, but this is trending stronger closer to the west coast of Florida, which you don't want to see. And, it, and here comes these just nasty winds about to approach the west coast of Florida, wind gust. And I mean, this thing's like early afternoon tomorrow, you're already getting 50 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts starting to move into the west coast of Florida. I mean, from north to Tampa, all the way down to Fort Myers, even points south, you're already getting nasty wind gusts. And I'm trying to catch a couple Oh, here it comes. We got one more. <laughs> I'm trying to catch it, guys. But look, it's inching closer. And it looks like the eye of the system is going to go south. It's going to go south of Tampa. So, you know, I just, I'll just i kind of jump over and I'll look at the H Wharf model. Would you guys? And doesn't look like it's running. Yeah, it's not running yet. So, yeah, we'll continue to move forward here. They got the storm surge. 10 to, uh, 10 to 15 feet of storm surge still forecasted. For Tampa Bay but it's starting to drop north of Tampa and I'm afraid it's starting to rise for like Charlotte Harbor now which is calling for 8 to 12 feet of storm surge and it might it might the forecast of amount of storm surge might go up from Inglewood to Benita Beach it might increase for this area because of these shifts south we're getting so 10 to as much as 15 feet of storm surge it might get a shift south okay now if we're talking about why this is intensifying so much, even right now, but look at the upper wind pattern. These are winds at 200 millibars, 35, 40,000 feet up in the air. Right now we're getting, one, we got such a moist environment. It's, it, this is over sea surface temperatures in the mid to upper 80s in Fahrenheit. Another is you're getting air rapidly being dispersed out away from the system above this system. So this system is spinning cyclonically in the low to mid levels. But in the upper levels, air is being pushed out at a very fast rate out away from the core of the system. Okay, we're starting to get some air kind of bumping up against the system here, but even that is getting pushed outward, and this is kind of going off to the side. So it has a lot of divergence aloft, meaning air is being forced out away from the system, especially on the north and eastern side of the system. I'm hitting the mic there a little bit. Hopefully it didn't make too loud of a noise. But... This thing is just thriving in a very low shear environment right now. And really one of the main thing is, things is, is that there's just not a lot of air movement in general, which tells us that it's a low shear environment. So as air is rising, it's being rapidly dispersed outward in the upper levels of the atmosphere. This is allowing for more air to rise at a fast pace. And it's just a continuous vicious cycle where this thing is just living and breathing its best life because it's able to sustain convection and fire it continuously. So, what I'm trying to say is very low shear environment right now. That changes as we get into tomorrow, we think. Okay, see how the number begins to rise right here? And this is still the 12Z um, hurricane model here. Um, it rises to a 956. Why does it weaken like that? Yeah, say, so, you know, a lot of people keep asking the question. Well, I've explained it many times. No long, you're, you're still getting air being dispersed outward right here right, which is good, but look at this westerly flow blasting the system, creating a lot of westerly shear. This interrupts the convection firing here 
This allows for dry air to get wrapped into the system because there's a ton of dry air back over here. Ton of dry air. When that westerly shear hits it, that dry air starts wrapping into the cyclonic flow and really interrupting the spin of this system and drying it out quite literally. Okay, so best way to see that as far as moisture is we keep moving here, right? We get into tonight, we get into tomorrow midday. Look at it. Tomorrow afternoon, this particular run of the eight of uh, the the H half B model, which I think we do have. Yep. So we we do have the um, H half B model. It shows the same thing. It's going to come in further south. You notice the H half B model. So we got the 18 Z. It, it it did tick south. Okay, but regardless, it shows weakening. It's still a very strong hurricane. Um, early afternoon tomorrow. But if you notice right here. All the moist air, that's not a good color to use. All the moist air is on the northern, even northwestern, and northeastern and eastern side of the system. Look how the brown is starting to get wrapped in. That's dry air. And you see that this side right here, the kind of the moist air is starting to not show up in green as much. It's starting to kind of dissipate, if you will. Okay, and then we take it all the way to landfall. Right as this makes landfall, sometime late tomorrow evening, tomorrow night, Look how much dry air has made it to the actual center of circulation. See the brown right here? You know, the heaviest convection is displaced to the north and northwest and northeast of the system. Look at all the dry air getting into the system. It's a lot of brown around the actual low pressure. So there's a chance that when this makes landfall, the southern side of the system can be really void of rain. And it's going to might surprise some people, but it really it shouldn't be surprising because all hurricane model guidance is showing it. In fact, you look at what the radar could look like based off this model, and it might show something different. I mean, it shows it. Look, void of convection on the southern side. Intensity is ongoing north. But listen, still, you're getting the rapid flow around this system like this. Okay, so you're still getting a ton of water being pushed right up against Sarasota, Venice, uh, Bradenton, all those areas. Okay, but we have gotten a shift south in model guides, folks. Um, it kind of stinks. I wish I could have waited about 30 minutes because it makes me think all this other stuff I showed you was for absolutely no reason. But it could turn around and shift back north. I'm not ready to call this shift south a trend, guys. I'm really not um, because it could turn around and shift right back north. So let's go over and scan through Twitter and just social media, see what we got here. Um and, you know, Andy's a very smart guy. We're just kind of seeing if we got any new information. Um, based on the late last two center passes, the earlier wobble right of the forecast seems to be over, and Milton seems to have turned northeast as forecast. Going to be a very close call for which part of the greater Tampa area and south southwest Florida receives the worst impact. So it's a big question, guys. You know, a big question on <laughs> my, my guy here. By the way, there is a big cool down coming uh, for the uh, for the um, for the eastern U.S., so that's that's some good news. But I know I'm getting off track here. But anyways, folks, this is a powerful hurricane um, for sure, and um, it's heading right towards Florida. We just got to figure out where the actual center of this storm is going to hit. That's the big question here. Where is the center of the storm going to hit? Who's going to see the worst winds? But this thing right now tonight is still a very healthy category five hurricane so that's all i got guys thank you all for tuning in god bless all y'all if i missed anything i do apologize this thing has took a lot of energy out of me i'll be honest i'll be, I'll be glad that when this is over but i'm also really really hoping that this thing somehow just rapidly weakens tomorrow and we can get the best case scenario out of this so god bless all y'all have a wonderful night and i'll talk to you again soon